Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host Scott and back with me yet again is my good friend Dan and I'm sure many of you might have been thinking we were going to relax a little heading into the holidays, especially after our yearly award show last week, but um, no, that's not happening. We're back this week and we have a belter of an episode for you. Oh yeah, we've got a cracker for you guys. I hope everyone listening is doing well. Not long until Christmas where we can all have a deserved rest for a week or so. But for this episode, we've managed to get a brilliant guest on. One I'm really looking forward to getting to know and one that we should be watching out for in the future. Yes, definitely agree with you on that. So on this week's podcast, we welcome all the way from Canada, Ingrid Wilm. Now, if you watched any of ISL this year, Ingrid won't be a new name to you. After being selected to the LA Current as an undrafted rookie, she finished the year as ISL's 11th highest points scorer and produced the fastest 100 meters backstroke short course time of the year so far. Um, She was LA's top female by 50 points. And she was also just three points shy of Tom Shields as the club's top overall mm. point scorer. So welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, Ingrid Wilm. Hi, yes, thank you very, very much for having me here. It's an honor to be in England virtually. <laughs> yeah. So um, how are you doing today? What's been on the schedule so far? Um, well, today I actually had the morning off. We've got a quick little swim competition this weekend here in Canada. But mainly, I've just been in rest and recovery mode from racing for the past month. <laughs> I like definitely took a beating. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Is it a case of you've had to adapt your training because of the way ISL's gone? Yes, definitely. I would say usually in the fall, we do a lot of the base work for the rest of the year. Mm. And then just because of ISL, it was more fine tuning things. So that's been different. But I, I think... My coach and I always say racing is the highest form of training. Yes. So I think I actually got a lot of good training in regardless. <laughs> a lot yeah, of swimmers have said that. that. Yeah, we've Laura that seems to John here that. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the aim of this podcast is to learn a little bit more about yourself as a swimmer because you might be a little bit new to the UK audience. Um, we're going to learn a little bit about your first season in ISL and also talk about the purple patch that Canadian women's swimming is experiencing right now. Because it's really going through. It's not bad. There's some very good swimmers all over the place. Very. So, um, as I said, you might be a little bit new here to the UK audience. So, tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey into swimming. So, how did things start for you? Um, I don't know if you know this. I was actually born in England. I was born in Norway. Yeah. Um, So, I guess it starts there. Uh, (laughs) I have five siblings. um, So... I actually started swimming. All of us had to start swimming from the time we were seven and then do a sport until we were 14, just because six kids, one house, a lot of energy Manic, <laughs> yep. out somewhere. <laughs> and I was just the only one that stuck with it. It's, it's my safe place. So get away from your siblings. Is that what you mean? What? <laughs> you heard? <laughs> I would never say that out loud on live. <laughs> So whereabouts in Canada are you based right now? Currently, I'm in Calgary, Alberta. Um, It's more on the western side of Canada. It's Mm. just the second province in, so landlocked all around, but we're beside some nice mountains that I really enjoy. Yeah, I really wanted to go to Calgary. It's the, the like, what was it? Lake Louise? Is that, have I got that right? Yes. Need to go there. I really need to go there. (laughs) It's cold though, isn't it? Um, yes. (laughs) I would recommend coming especially in the month of January, it's gone down to negative 40 before, Ooh. but um, summer months, it's perfect. If, like, it might be a England winter in the summer. You'll be- <laughs> Oh, that's still cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you said you carried on past your, when you were 14, when your other siblings dropped out. Where, what kind of route did you take? Was it college? Was it stay through club swimming? How does it work over in Canada? 
In Canada, um, you can stay with your team. I went to university in Vancouver, and okay. then I came back home for the Olympic year just because my training style in Vancouver wasn't fitting much with the coach there. Like, I love the team members, and we'll never say anything negative about the team there. It was just my personal training style matched more with my home team of Cascade here in Calgary, and I thought that would be my best chance to make the Olympic team, so I came back home. Yeah. So what made you realize that? Was that your coach saying that, that if things weren't working out, or was it just purely your decision personally? Um, I feel like it was a mixture of both. I am i don't know how much of my swimming you've watched, but my stroke rate right now, even though it seems pretty low, it's much higher than it used to be. I've gotten a lot stronger oh. in my arms. So mm. I've never been a swimmer that you can push stroke rate on. I have to focus on my technique first, and I feel like, a lot of the swimmers there were a lot stronger than I was. So it was difficult training two different types of swimmers at the same time. When yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so you've not- up the land training and gym stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just needed yeah. a little bit of a different program. And I'd been with Cascade before. This is where Calgary was where I moved when I first moved to Canada. So I knew that this program worked for me pretty well. And so after a few years at UBC, when I wasn't seeing much progress... I decided to, well, Cascade was uh, nice enough to take me back, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> now, you say you you weren't seeing any progress. You definitely are now because you're the number one ranked backstroker in the world. Unfortunately, you won't be racing at Abu Dhabi. Kind of when this goes live, I think actually the racing started. So mm. why don't you tell us a little bit about that? It's, it's kind of a weird selection policy over in Canada, isn't it? It's all based on long course times rather than short course. Yeah, I can't say that I'm not disappointed to not be there. Mm. I actually used to live in Abu Dhabi and it would have been nice to go back and see how things have changed and just to see how I would have held up against um, the best in the world on the FINA of how they Circuit. set up the races. Yeah. Mm. Like, you know, on I felt a two hour session, you're in, you're out. And mm. then it would have been more dedicated towards my hunter back as an individual race rather than for the team. So I, I can't say I'm not disappointed to go and see how I could have done there. Like I also think the selection process is a little bit outdated and I'm hopeful for any future competitions they might revamp the selection process, just a short course competition where we could post times seems a little Mm. silly to choose long course times for a short course event but in the in the end of the day at the end of the day grammar i'm there uh (laughs) i i fully support all the swimmers that are going there for team canada and i hope they do awesome i know they can like you said the women's team is awesome Mm. and i don't see why they can't kick butt (laughs) Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the Canadian women's team. I mean, they're taking a strong team, even without you. Um, how do you think they'll fare? I think they'll do amazing. A lot of those, like like I said, the girls, they're tough and they're competitors. Even over ISL, they were all doing fairly well, the ones that went. Um, I know Maggie McNeil wasn't at ISL, but she is an insane competitor mm. and I think mm. going to do really, really well, just like she did at Tokyo Olympics. So... <laughs> You're part of this amazing Canadian swimming team right now that are coming through the ranks. Is there a reason there is this purple patch? Is 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 it down to something that happened at junior age? Or is it... Yeah, I think it's out of necessity. All of these okay. girls are going so fast that I have to step up my game just to match them, just to match the mm. speed. Mm. And um, I wouldn't say I did anything different as young. I didn't make many teams. I made a few when I was younger, it's just more about building up our confidence and, you know, why can't we perform with the best at the top of the world? Just having that belief within ourselves. And if we want to make a team, a lot of the girls are so fast with the top Mm. in the world that we got to be fast ourselves just to try to make it there. (laughs) Yeah. So so it's a case of success breeds success almost. Yes. I would. Yeah. It's a good way to put it. (laughs) Yeah, because I think there's a thing in this country where we have really good juniors, but then the transition from juniors to seniors is quite a big stepping stone. And I think we're starting to just get over that in this country. I think Abby Wood's probably our most f- famous one, if you want to say that, where she was so good at juniors. And then it took about 
three, maybe four years. And so ISL. she, re- yeah, yeah, it was ISL when she break, broke out. Um, and there's, there's none of that sort of problem in Canada at all then? Um, I'd say around the world, that's still sort of a problem. Mm. It's almost like I would compare it. My first thought was to school, how there's gifted children when you're younger. And then when you go to university, sometimes they're not always still gifted. It's more about learning how to transition what worked for you then won't certainly work for you when you're older like Mm. your body changes you mature um and you just need to learn how to train differently in order to keep the same results yeah yeah Mm. we don't recover as quick as we get older (laughs) yeah yeah. i can testify to that one we know that Um, (laughs) so we said abby woods kind of break out performances came at isl and she became into the public eye because of that and very much the same thing has happened for you this year um in our minds you were very much rookie of the year you're racing at your first ever isl um you look like you really enjoyed yourself how was it for you i really really did enjoy myself my team la current was so awesome and so nice to me if i had oppression or i I get very nervous before races. They were so good about calming me down and just Mm. redirecting my focus into how fun of an environment it was. And so I know I've said this before. I'm so sorry if folks listening are tired of hearing it. I loved looking over to the box and just seeing Mm. my team cheering for me and like smiling before my races. It was like breathing a breath of fresh air. It was really nice. Yeah. Well, the nerves didn't show at all. You know, the whole LA currently do kind of do the wave thing. I don't know what you want to call that, but <laughs> it makes you, it makes it look like you're relaxing. You know, is, is that a thing that you were told to do to try and reduce the nerves? Uh, no, actually, I, I just wanted to represent for LA current. Like I know the condors have the bird and uh, mm, I think yeah, like yeah. the London roar uh, thing. And iron with the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. I'd have the muscles for it. Tapping the guns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Ellie, it was just our way of, it's, you know, everyone team has their mascot. Ours happens to be a swimmer in some waves. So hmm. say wavy. It's just fun. Waves it is. Yeah. <laughs> do you think the, um, the ISL style of, well, team environment plus racing on racing on racing where there's, there's no breaks. Do you think that's, really helped with your nerves yes definitely the quick turnarounds um just only having enough time to focus on like oh i didn't really like my turn into that wall and then just coming right Mm. back into it and giving that race Mm. another go and like constantly being able to learn and tweak tiny little things not big things because we only want to take steps we don't want to cause massive Mm. changes um and then also becoming more confident and trusting certain aspects of my race the quick turnarounds definitely helped with that you couldn't get in your head too much you were just you were in you're out you're in you're out <laughs> mm, and then you're yeah. i think that's what carl charms was saying on his way to breaking that 100 free world record is that the race the fact that he was racing every weekend he was still at peak condition if you want to call it that but it was just a little minor details i don't know an extra fly kick off the wall or no breathing for the last five meters or so makes all the difference what was it like racing the best swimmers in the world? Kind of surreal. I tried not to think about it too much. Like I said, I get nervous very easily. So I'd go in, do my race, and then I'd come out and people would be like, yeah, that's the world record holder right there. And I'm like, <laughs> I was, I was right with her. <laughs> yeah. Um, so surreal, I would say. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this, this is almost... I'm getting a bit of deja vu. This is almost like the exact conversation we have with Abby last year, the mm. way that she broke out and basically ISL really helped her get out of her head. Yes. It's, it's amazing that it can do this for junior swimmers. And maybe this is the competition that that transition stage that you were speaking about, Dan, mm. maybe that's what is missing. That jump from seniors or, or juniors to seniors, maybe this ISL is is really going to help with that. I think it helps with finances as well. I don't know if you've seen the benefit <laughs> of that. I don't payments get a little bit late, but you know it does help with um, a, a athlete's career, I guess. Yes, I would. I don't get. I like I said, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I don't get a lot of funding. I wasn't carded by the government until this year, so something like this, it's really the reason I can actually keep swimming. Mm, this year mm. like i don't know how much longer i could have gone because costs 
go yeah, off. They're and not small. Finding a yeah. job that coincides with the training schedule is a little tough. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So, yeah, short time, you know, and so something like this is really, really helpful, and I'm so thankful not only for the financial aspect, but I don't think I don't know when or if I was saying this in an interview uh, after a race. I would have gotten a chance to race these mm -hmm. girls at this level if it weren't for ISL. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would have been able to have my breakthrough moment without the constant racing because even in the regular season, my times from my match one to my match two, like I got best times match one, but I didn't drop the like second and a half until my second match. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just finding the confidence from that, I don't know if I would have been able to do that just on a one-off competition that we usually have here in Canada. Yeah. How do you now take these performances away and translate them to, I hate to say the long course format because short course format is, we've seen over the past few months is equally as valuable and equally mm. as exciting, but how do you take it to the Olympic format of swimming? Yeah, well, I did learn a few things about my races in the short course. Like I need to trust my front end speed a little bit more. And once I started doing that, I started getting some better times. Also, I need to work on my underwaters quite a bit. I've been watching some of my races and I'm good at the turn part now. And then I push off what seems like ahead and I pop up a little bit behind. So short course will highlight that. <laughs> yeah. Here in Calgary does not translate to good at underwaters in uh, the world format. Who knew? Uh, so <laughs> and then, like I said, trusting my front end speed a little bit more. Mm. And I really think one of my big blocks is my mental headspace. And so I think ISL greatly helped with that. Yeah. And I hope that when I transition into long course times, I'll be able to trust myself a little bit more. Cause I, I know some of these girls that go the times that I went, I know what they go long course. So I don't see why I can't do that long course. Mm. Love did that. Uh, did Love coach that. Marsh help you out quite a lot? Yes. Coach March. I saw in your questions, he is a really, really nice guy. Yes. Yeah. What you see in the interviews is very similar to what he's like in person. He um, was always so complimentary and so uplifting. My very first match, he was like, I, because I was originally chosen as a relay swimmer. And he was mm. like, yeah, we were watching you off the plane and in training. And we're going to enter you in the tuner back because your technique, we really like it. And we want to, we believe that you can actually do something here. Like he was watching my swimming and he was like, I don't see why you can't do this. So you go out there because we chose you. And it was just perfect okay. things I needed to hear before my first ISL race. <laughs> and the rest is history. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. So you got the chance to work with him. Also turning up for the playoffs was Ryan Murphy. Now, if there's mm. anyone to pick up tips for backstroke and especially improving underwaters, he is the man to do that. Did you manage to get his to pick his brain at all? Um, I actually, one of the backstroke tips I got was from another member on our team for my dive. I dragged my feet a little bit. So okay. Polis from Greece, he was helping me with some drills. Um, but Ryan actually not regarding backstroke. I can't remember the exact wording he used, but there was one time in cool down where I was just like, yeah, I got this time, but like nothing special in the playoffs. And he was like, okay, but you got to remember that like, it wasn't that long ago you went these times and what you did is still good. Like it was consistent. It wasn't anything like spectacular anymore, but it was consistent with what I've been doing this whole playoff season and that's still something to be proud of mm. so we kind of like you said brought it back to the basics that like okay so I didn't get the world record but I still had a good race yeah <laughs> and that's something to be proud of so yeah well every time we spoke about ISL on the podcast we spoke about the effect that Cody Miller had on DC Trident the fact that maybe he wasn't winning the races but in terms of building morale and cheering on the team um, it brought DC Trident up another level, we found. Is that the same with Ryan when he came in for, for the playoffs? Yeah, we always have a nice team meeting before we head to the pool. And both he and Tom always had like good, uplifting things to say and how proud they were of our team and how the team in the room that they had there, they were so happy and proud to be swimming with and for. And how like even like we receive a lot of cool stuff 
at ISL. Mm -hmm. And like sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we might not wear some of that stuff out. Like, I don't know how stylish a big purple jacket's going to seem. <laughs> <out and out. laughs> um, but we keep it just for the memories. And they yeah. were, uh, yeah. Brian was saying something like that at the end. And it was, you know, it's nice to know that like, out of all the team, like they've been on so many teams that this is still one and they're mm. they still find out these type of teams worthy of being remembered, you know, like if they're not disenchanted yeah. to it, that's nice to see. Yeah. It's all, it's almost, I don't know. It's almost like ISL has helped you more with the mental aspect of swimming more than anything else. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. You can see the improvements just from this, what is it the couple of inches up on top of your head that's that's the difference between the top elite swimmers and the ones who are just on the borderline it's incredible it's confidence, it's confidence isn't it it's mm. all it is if you have someone like ryan and tom building up before a race then you're gonna feel like yeah let's 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 go and do it they're right yeah let's go <laughs> yeah yeah no, at least say for me it was isl helped greatly with my mental my mental game <laughs> So how would you rate your performances overall? Um, well, I do wish I could have gotten another best time in the final. Um, my regular season, I, I would pat my own back, rate them quite high <laughs> for myself. Um, I wasn't expecting to go anything like that. And so, like, you know, as soon as we dream of doing things like that, like I'm mm. 23, and just dropped a second and a half. So many governments of bodies of swimming, as soon as you hit 21 and you're not seeing any mm. new times, they kind of just forget about you and push you to the side. So to do something like that, it was insane. Like, like I said, I mm. didn't really even dream that I could go with 55. So I, I'd like to rate myself pretty high. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rightly so um we'll talk a little bit about skins I, I have to i've got to ask you about skins because from the outside looking in it looks like hell on earth <laughs> um how, how is it especially when you get uh, to that third round oh the third round uh, i will tell you in the playoffs when i was against kira in that third round i was going into the wall and i was like okay i got this like i could see that i was a little bit ahead and then I pushed off and we started doing underwater. My legs were like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. I don't know that I have this. So I popped up right away and I was like, my arms, they're going to do all the work for this last one. <laughs> and then to walk to your team afterwards. And if they want an interview, I'm like shaking my legs and my arms. The oh, whole the time interview. Trying to stay yeah. <laughs> Got more of you afterwards. It's just yeah. mean. <laughs> I'm like, don't ask me to do any stairs right now. I will, I will collapse. <laughs> yeah, Mark Foster's always keen to get as many questions as you can. You can just see the summers after it's drained. It's like, <gasps> just knackered. It's only, I think, only Sarah Sostrom just looks normal. Everyone else is just knackered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mark Foster, he was a great guy. It was nice to meet him. Mm -hmm. I'm just, like I said, not always so great at interviews. And then right after the races, I'm like, I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> do you um do you prepare at all for skins so obviously now it's it's a well-documented part of isl do you do anything specific in training to prepare yourself for that level of pain, level of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, one of the things that i've been talking about with some people this year is my coach likes to do something called friday morning special um okay it's a lot of pain um <laughs> <laughs> you do 100s, 50s, 25s. It's with fins, so it's nice, but it's all fast. So, for example, mm. we'll do eight 100s fast, eight 50s fast, eight 25s okay. fast, and like you know, in your head, you're like, that's not so bad. But going all out fast and then not getting to cool down in between on two mm. minutes rest, the lactate mm. it builds. So by the time you're even on the 50s, I'm like. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so going into just doing three fifties on three minutes while the rest does somehow seem shorter. Like when you mm, get out okay. of the tunnel, I'm already getting back in. Um, I really think Friday morning special helped me 
poor at that. See, see, we used to do a session at Gloucester. It was seven fifties. Didn't sound like much, but it was off. It was max out from a dive, and yeah. it was off five minutes. So you do like I don't know, just to say, just say thirty seconds, twenty five seconds, and then you sat there for four minutes, and it's just pooling. And yeah. I was guaranteed sick on number five. <laughs> always hated it, but Scott loved it. Mental. Yeah, I, I, just... I used to enjoy that pain. Oh no, no way, no way. Are you looking forward to being part of LA Current in the future? I certainly hope I get the chance to, but yes, I would love to swim for LA Current again if they'll have me. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be stupid if they don't pick you yeah. next season. Yeah. <laughs> That's stupid, but it'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll bang your drum if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we spoke about long course swimming and translating short course to long course. Um, Long course backstroke, we've been saying for a very long time in this podcast, is in one of the richest periods it's ever been in. The mm. The women's side is super exciting to watch. The men's side, again, super exciting. 100 meter format, you, you have no idea who's going to win whatever final gets put in front of you. How do you prepare yourself for a future trying to trying to break into that, essentially? Well, like you said, they, it's definitely... Like, if you look at the times at the previous Olympics to the times at this mm. Olympics, going 57s and 58s, like, the fact that the world record has now most certainly broken that 58-second barrier, I think, is amazing. Mm. Um, I would love to try to follow them in order to do so and become competitive with them. Um, I don't know. I feel like a mistake sometimes I myself have made in the past is 100, you want to pace it. But it's really, it's a sprint. It's just two fifties without, mm. like, you just got to go out for it as though it's a 50 and then come back for it. Like, it's, it's your first 50. Mm. Um, I think that's how I mentally prepare for it. Um, but, yes, it's it's a tough race to be in, right? Especially in Canada, too. I've got, like, yeah, I was gonna say, that, yeah. that are, like, sub-59. <laughs> I was going to say the advantage you've got is if you qualify for that Canadian team, you know you're in, right up there of the top yeah. eight in the world, essentially. Yeah. yeah, I actually think the hundred backstroke is right up there with like maybe not two hundred fly pain, but the hundred back hurts. The, the the second length, the legs I used to find killed me, and I, I did your tactic of just swing the arms and hope for the best <laughs> in the end. But um, yeah, how how do you train for it? Do do you do the hundred and the two hundred? Uh, is that what the training is going to be about? Um, if you watch my stroke technique, especially growing mm. up, I have definitely the technique of a 200 backstroker. Yeah. But until I die, I will stick to the claim that I am a sprinter and I only do the 50 and the 100, not the 200. <laughs> I will I will stand by this. It'll be on my this tombstone. Is... I, I'm a 100 <laughs> swimmer. This is a swimmer of my own heart. I had a <laughs> what eight hundred meter technique and only swam fifty. Mm. <laughs> I was doing catch up while doing fifty. That's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, what are you looking for the the next three years heading into Paris? Are you looking to stay in Calgary until then? Stick with your coach and yeah, I, get a long I'm, block of training in. Yeah, working with Dave seems to be working pretty well mm. and we have a really good camaraderie and relationship he lets me have fun and work out lets me laugh but i'll still do the work obviously um and he, he he's one of those coaches that listens and is always willing to learn new things and i, I really mm. appreciate that about him um so yeah i why mess with a good thing <laughs> i see myself if i can staying with cascade as long as they'll have me um okay and trying to make uh, trying to make the teams this year so that I can prove myself on the long course mm. um, races face. There's a word there that's not coming to my head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then clearing that speed and hopefully into 2024 for the Paris Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Are you going to be targeting, is it Worlds this year? Is that the main target for the upcoming season? Worlds and Commonwealth. Yeah, mm. uh, of course. Yeah, of course. England myself. You'll yeah. be over here. In person. Yeah. Uh, yes, the times are actually, the cutoff times are quite speedy. I think okay. for Canada backstroke, it's a 58, either high or low. So it's interesting Blimey. that the cutoff time, it's harder to make the Commonwealth than the Olympics, but I'm going to do my best <laughs> yeah, to make blimey. it. <laughs> Doesn't make much sense, does it? Well, 
I mean, you've been swimming really fast so far this year. So hopefully 2022 mm. is an incredibly successful year for you. Um, Ingrid, I've, I've really enjoyed this podcast. It's been so much fun. Um, we usually end things with some quick fire questions so yeah. that our audience can get to know you just that tiny bit better. How does that I'm sound ready. for you? I'm ready. I might not be ready, but I'm ready. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite event? 50 breaststroke. <laughs> ready <laughs> i actually no it is 50 breaststroke uh it's not my best oh. event by any means but it's an event that um i have no pressure at all and it just brings us back to how fun racing can be it's just something that i'm laughing before during and after so it's yeah <laughs> Interesting. That caught me by surprise. It did. Yeah, my face just <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> um, Who is your swimming idol? I don't know. I used to have a childhood idol growing up, but you know, never meet your idols. Uh, mm. <laughs> um, is it too cheesy if I say my coach? No, that's cool. No, I, well, my coach. <laughs> that's, that's a new one. No one said that before. Well, yeah, usually it's just Michael Phelps. Yeah, yeah. Phelps. Seven, yeah. Um, what's your proudest moment in swimming so far? That is a question I have not been asked yet, so I do not. Uh, proudest moment in swimming so far. I I think I have to go with the first time I broke the 56 barrier short course. I mean, I hadn't even broken the 57 barrier before that, so just skipped mm. 56 entirely mm. at first. And then my home coach, Dave, was in the crowd because he was a coach for Toronto Titans. And so he okay, was up yeah. in the audience. And then I had LA Current. And then I knew my family and siblings at home were watching. So it was to just break that 56 good. for the first time. It was, yeah, then. <laughs> nice, nice. nice. Um, what's the hardest set you've ever done in training? Friday morning special, 12, 12, 12. Mm. So, and like, it's not even just the one off set. It's Friday morning. So, you know, I've had a heck of a week before that. Mm. And, you know. And those sessions are always with fins or do you get unlucky sometimes? Um, and Usually they're with fins. Yeah. So your legs feel the load. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I love yeah. Oh, wow. Just horrible, isn't it? Um, and final question, a little bit of a curveball. If you were to go on a road trip, there's three spaces in the car. Who would you take with you? They can be friends, family, or celebrities. Oh. Dead or alive, That's that always comes up too. Oh, my gosh. Oh yeah, my makes God. it harder. Yeah. <laughs> Wide open. <laughs> I can't even think. Dead. <laughs> um, well, I'm a huge Marvel fan. Um nice <laughs> oh wow nice um, <laughs> i appreciate that yeah <laughs> um so i'm trying to decide i feel like chris evans he seems like a really nice guy um who would i take who would i take <laughs> You know what, for the pure reason that I promised my little sister that I would mention her and Dylan O'Brien in an interview one day, <laughs> I would my sister and Dylan O'Brien so that <laughs> she could see him and I would finally pay off my debt. <laughs> I promised Go her I would <laughs> yeah. so, I'm going to take my little sister and Dylan O'Brien. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Very nice. Um, Ingrid, it's been so much fun speaking to you. A massive congratulations on what was a hugely successful rookie year for the LA Current. I'm sure we'll be seeing much more of you in the future. Um, Dan, this has been a lot of fun. It has, hasn't it? I've, 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 you can come back on again, Ingrid. And back, <laughs> come on next week and the week after and the week after as well. That'd be brilliant. Well, listen, good luck for the rest of this upcoming season. Hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll be back on LA Current. And of course, hopefully, three years time, we'll be seeing you on the Canada team in Paris. And yes. commies in the UK. Yeah, got to get back home to Norwich, see how things are doing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cold. Um, <laughs> not as cold as Canada, Dan. It'll be, it'll be <laughs> 
Um, so that just about rounds up this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. It's been a really, really fun one. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify. We will be back, I believe, next week. One more week before Christmas, but I think we're mm. still back with another interview for everyone to listen to. Um, so Dan, I will see you in seven days time. Yes. Thank you very much, Ingrid. Thank you everyone for listening and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you everyone. Happy Christmas. Subscribe. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.